Off and running, Big Package Friday, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule. The guy over there looking like LL Cool J, that is Lindsey Hunter. We have Big Mike Gentry in the house, Spencer Rachter, his dad, Danny. Happy birthday to him. We've been drinking some bourbon. Uh, just, you know, it's Friday, man. We're cutting loose. We're going to drop the big packages in three, two, one. All right, let's get out of the gate strong. The Lions nickel package. You guys know what it is, nickel package. Five questions about your Detroit Lions. Myself and Lindsey react. Spenmo on the ones and twos. Let's kick it. All right, first question of the Lions nickel package. More receiving yards next season or this season. Marvin Jones Jr. or Josh Reynolds? I think that it's going to be... I think it's going to be Josh Reynolds. I'm going against the trend, Lindsay. It's never what everybody thinks it is. And there's something to be said. In the NFL, especially at the quarterback position, I'm sure this was your case. You made a career off of this. People are just comfortable with certain people. Oh, absolutely. That's why when, that's why when you're a good <laughs> basketball team, you go get Lindsey Hunter because you know what he's bringing to the party, and you set it and you forget it. Josh Reynolds is that to Jared Goff. That's why I am with Josh Reynolds on this. It's not popular, I know, but that's where I am. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. I, I, I think he's a you know he'll be a security blanket like we every quarterback loves to have a couple of those actually if you're going to be a good team. Right. Um, but I agree. I, I, I think Marvin will help sporadically and he'll be a, a good locker room guy like he's been in a good leadership role mm -hmm. and do what's needed of him um i don't think he'll be a constant guy out you know right that that, that will be targeted um but i, I agree i totally agree uh, in the woodwardsports.com chat thread david mentier says reynolds is underrated in my opinion you know what, david? i'm with you on that people just kind of gloss over him here he's important to jared goff so, i.e., he's important to the process here. Is that Definitely. fair? No, more than fair. <laughs> more than fair. You know, we've seen unheralded guys rise to stardom because a quarterback is so comfortable with them that, you know, they're targeted more than anybody else. Right. That's happened a lot, you know. So, you know, I don't know if he'll be a, a marquee guy, but I know he'll get his fair share. No, there, there is there is no doubt about that. Second down, right. or who do you got on that, Spenmo? Uh, you with me? Did I convince you? Yeah, I think it's Josh Reynolds. I just like they have that comfortability factor. We saw Josh Reynolds was a guy who got cut by the Titans, and then he comes to Detroit and he looks like a good receiver because him, him and Jared Goff had that connection. So, uh, when you're looking at deep balls down the field without Jameson Williams there, pause. I, I, <laughs> I know it's uh, Marvin Jones has brought in to do some of that, but Josh Reynolds is going to be the guy that Goff looks for. I would agree. Second down. Second down. Next question for the Lions nickel package. Who gets more snaps next year, James Houston or Romeo Aquara? What my hope is, my hope is that it's Aquara, believe it or not, because that means he's, he's a contributing piece to this defense and somebody that just puts another log on the fire. We asked a question yesterday, Lindsey. We said, will the Lions defense be a top 15 defense? And unilaterally, I was like, yeah, right, you know, right about there. If you want them to be closer to a top 10, then when you start working backwards from that, a guy like Romeo Quara is a guy that becomes a piece of that, like a central piece of that. I hope it's a Quara. Uh, Houston, too, I mean, to hedge it, Houston's in that specialty role, you know, kind of like the uh, – Kind of like the deep threat receiver of the defense, like right. passing situations, get to the QB, that kind of stuff. I hope it's a quarrel, Lindsey. Well, of course, for selfish reasons, I hope it's Houston, and I hope he really can step into a Jackson role where, State stand of up. Of course, yep. <laughs> that he can step into a role and dominate even more, and prove that he's a bona fide, you know, pass rusher, like a guy that can play just more than a specialty role. And, and I think too, like people forget with James Houston they, they act like they act like he just came out of nowhere and, and I guess to some degree he did but people forget he was a big time recruit in college big time recruit well that's what happens when you go to you know a smaller school people tend to write you off and say oh this guy came out of nowhere no he didn't come out of yeah, nowhere he was at Florida dude. <laughs> right right yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying but that's what happens and I'm just happy for him that he's, he's really playing well and hopefully he can flourish this year Fort Lauderdale, Florida, man. Football factory. Yes. Football factory. Third down. All right, next question. Next question of the Lions nickel package. Who will have the fastest on-field time next season? I know they always do the miles per hour of guys running down the field. 
You got a couple very good options for the Lions. Obviously, Jamison Williams yes. is up there. You yes. got Jameer Gibbs up there. Jamison Williams. Khalif period. Raymond. He's going to be a guy that gets a lot of the kickoff and punt returns, so he's going to have a lot of that straight line speed option. Is it Jamison Williams? For you? Yeah, because I'll never shake. I'll never be able to unsee that game against Georgia in the SEC championship, right. where he he was from a different planet. <laughs> Like he looked like a, he looked like a European bullet train man going down. That was Georgia he was running away from. It wasn't like it was Michigan State, all hey, due respect, all right, or right. Michigan, <laughs> all due respect. We had a tough time in the Just college football Big Ten. playoff. Just say yeah, Big it, Ten. Yeah, it wasn't okay. Fine. It wasn't like he was running away. Pretend that one didn't happen. Edit that out in post editing. <laughs> it wasn't like he was running away from a Big Ten team. Right. That was Georgia. He was right. doing that too. Right. And, and, and this all circles back to it, guys. Yes, rinse, wash, repeat. It's wash, rinse, repeat. I guess would be the steps. But anyway, <laughs> that's that's where it all comes back to. It's freak shit. Yeah. He's a freak. Right. Right. Can't be taught, can't become that. You are that or you aren't that. Right. He is that. Well, Our well, Tyreek Hill. Think about it. With most of those Georgia receivers, when they come to the NFL, in the past, they didn't have passing quarterbacks. So you didn't know how good potentially those guys could be. They were just studs. Um, but now, since Alabama has kind of changed the prototypical quarterback, they are really throwing the ball more. Um, you see freaks like this coming to the – NFL and and doing well, be, becoming all you know all pros, and hopefully that trend doesn't stop with him because he has all the intangibles. He has the speed, good size, you know, and he's only going to get better. Uh, the birthday boy Danny Raxter has chimed in. He hey. said, "What what about Mims?" And that is fair too. Like low key, we all just glossed over Mims on that, mm -hmm. but I've seen a real life Secretariat in the SEC championship game. I saw it with my own eyes, and I'll never unsee that. No, and it looks as though he's going to continue that in the NFL. We're just watching some of the clips from camp. You know, everybody was poo-pooing him early on, and the latest clips has been tremendous. Yeah, he's been balling. <laughs> the latest <laughs> clips have been like... And Dan Campbell said he's going to get a lot of preseason work. <laughs> yeah, good. So I'm excited for that. I'm going to a preseason game, so... I was thinking I might slide, I might slide down, who, who too. Who do they play? Who do they play? Giants and Jags. I don't think I'll go see. <laughs> you don't strike me as a preseason football kind no, of guy, I mean, Lindsay. If it was a better, uh, those teams I don't care to see. And then they don't play, you know, most of the guys maybe play a series or two and then yeah. they sit, you know? Yeah, no, I, I get it. Uh, here on Mark M makes a point in the WoodwardSports.com chapter. Lots of speed on this team. When did that happen, by the way? Yeah, it kind of you happened. Know, you notice it that? It kind of sneakily happened. <laughs> kind of For real. Like... I didn't even think about that, Mark, yeah. until you said that in the WoodwardSports.com right. chat thread. Yeah, I think I think if we you look around and you look at all the Super Bowl contending teams, all of them have an element of speed. We have to. Yeah, on, on you know either receiver, running back, somewhere you know, um, and that makes a difference, man. Especially when you got a quarterback that can put that ball on. When, have we ever been a fast team? Not really. Not that I can remember. Like. Never. I, I know. I think who, back in the day, I think you know, Johnny Morton was fast, but he wasn't. But, but he wasn't. He wasn't, he wasn't fast like these. He guys. wasn't like you saw a clip of him running, and you'll never unsee it fast. Right. right. No. The, the, like Calvin clips, was fast, but he was. He didn't Calvin was fast. fast, but he wasn't Randy Moss fast. <laughs> like when you saw Randy Moss catching him, you were yeah. like, that's different. Like I always judge it by this. Like when you see somebody running down the field, and the gap gets bigger yes. as. as you know, like he runs away that from was people. Randy Moss. We've never had that yeah. that I can remember. No, no, because as as great as Barry was, he wasn't. Like he wasn't fast. He got caught from behind. Yeah, that people used to criticize him for that. I well, used to laugh at that. Well, shit. remember, they were criticizing him about that. Then the year he came back, Bar Barry was quick, but he came back because he had worked on his, I guess, you know, burst, yeah. burst more, and then he didn't get caught anymore after that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was insanely, incredibly quick. Yeah, James Hewitt says. Yeah, Charles Rogers was fast. Yeah, he was he was out of the league speed. fast too. Uh, well, yeah, other 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 reasons. Yeah, but he was he was fast. No, it's it doesn't mean it's not sad, but it did happen. Yeah, like, no doubt. You know, no doubt. It did yeah. happen. Yeah, and that's that's part of that's part of the package, man. It is incredibly sad right, what man, happened. Yeah. Spartan right. dog. Spartan dog, man. Fourth down. Let me tell you guys this question: the fourth question of the Lions nickel package. 
Will the Lions have a top five offense? We talked about defense yesterday, top 15. Will they repeat with a top five offense next season? I say no. I say no also. Yeah, I think they'll, they'll, they'll be top 10. I can see them being top 10. It's just such a – the Jared Goff interception thing. Look, I'm a Goff fan. Uh, I think certainly when you look around the, the league at salaries, you guys have heard me say this a million times. Right. The, the percentage discount you get, he outperforms that salary discount. There, there's there's no, no question doubt. about no it. I just to be in single digits in interceptions in the NFL, it's tough. Is so hard, it's man. Tough. Mm-hmm. It and it's it's just it's you not can't expect him to No, do no, it. you can't predict that, yeah. right? My thing is this though, because I like risk takers, so I don't mind if you're a quarterback and you're accurate and you're making big time plays, then you're gonna throw some interceptions. I don't mind that as long as, you know, you're making the big-time throws, you know, when it counts. Unless you're Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't throw any interceptions. That shit is well, wild. Just, <laughs> that shit is wild. Man. Well, he's – I mean, people can talk all they want to. Aaron Rodgers is special. Yes. He's special. Like No, he used to be special. He's still uh, special. He'll, he'll be special this year. They got you too, Lindsey? Okay. Top no, they don't have MVP me. I've just, I've just watched him his entire career. Guy's got two of the last three MVPs. In the <laughs> Okay. He's still special. All right. You'll would you see. Ta- would you take him right now on, yes. on the Lions team? No. Yes. Oh, come no. on. No. Come no. On. 60 million? No. No. No, he deferred that money, didn't he? Yeah. Nah, he, he did rip up the contract. Mm-hmm. Still, no. No, I need a quarterback that can, you know, throw for 300 yards in a game. Still, I need that. No, he can do that. He didn't last year. Not one effing <sighs> game. He had see, a thumb people. Injury. I know, it's always there's always there's always something right. He was on a peyote trip. He had a thumb injury. He was engaged <laughs> to Danica Patrick and now is not, but now is, but now seeing somebody else. He was at the Rangers game and could. It's always something but with yeah, him. All those things are true. You just said. <laughs> Fifth down. <laughs> last get, question. Stay on the clock. <laughs> last question of the Lions nickel package: Who will lead the team in pass breakups next season? Yeah, uh, I mean. I'm still on Team Kirby for interceptions. I mean, pass breakups, right? Like, it's got to be Cam Sutton, yeah. right? Has to be. Yeah. That's why Has he's here. Be. Right. He better be. He led the league last year. Led the league last yeah, he year. He in interceptions. Combined. It rarely works that way, though. Yeah. It rarely works that way. I don't know. I, Cam Sutton, I guess. I'm probably giving away. Like, if we set lines on it, I'd probably be giving away some value because he'd be the over bet favorite. Yeah. But whatever. I don't have a better answer, Lindsay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. That's fair. That's I'm on the spot. I'll go with something too. Um, Steve Wild says, "Oh my God, bro! You don't criticize JMO, but critique Rogers." <sighs> Here we go with this again. Spend more. <laughs> if I told you a player gets uh, a one touchdown every nine targets, would you think he's good? I would. I'd say. Oh, you wouldn't good. call him a bust because of no, that? No, I wouldn't. I would say it's pretty good. And what about three touchdowns for every nine targets? Technically. Yeah. <laughs> But Should be four. But, but you can't. Well, who's he was called? underthrown on one where he was wide open in the end zone, and he had to wait for it, and the cornerback had you know to what? catch up. Now that we've got to that, that's that's so lazy to say, how are you going to replace one catch? You start breaking it down, like working backwards from it, nine targets, and look at the impact. Yeah. If he had if he had the same amount of targets as Chris Olave last year, last year he would have had 13 touchdowns. And been rookie of the year. And been rookie of the year. Well, who's who's calling him a bust? People call him bust for sure. He's only he's... <laughs> see. I, I have you a knew problem. what you, you knew what was happening last year. It was written in the cards that he wasn't right, going to play. Right. You're surprised to get anything out of him. Right. Uh, that, that, if you're mad about him getting suspended, I'm cool with that. You can be right. mad at yeah. Them. Right. But I, I have a problem with calling guys bust this early in their career. Like, you, you know that that's just crazy to me. No, you, you can't call a guy a bust at that. Even if he doesn't become an all-pro guy, if he's a, a constant, steady receiver, he's not a bust. Yeah. Uh, a Dirty Burrito says, someone pushed Neil's trigger button. Not today, bro. Shout out. What's this called? Widow Jane, 10-year. To the Widow of Jane. Yeah. <laughs>